all right you are welcome to the part three of prophetic codes and you are at the right place if you are a prophetic person or you are someone who wants to know in depth about the prophetic now if you have not watched the part one and the part two then i would encourage that you watch the part one and part two also to get a full understanding of how to use prophetic codes in your personal life your business and then your ministry now we must understand that these codes are keys or these codes are prophetic nuggets that will help you to be prophetic and it will help you to train yourself as a prophet and so these are codes that i am teaching and making it simple for each and everyone to be able to follow and i believe that maybe you've watched one or two of my videos and you are here for this one and you can testify how it has helped you now if you are such a person you know you want to reach out to us let us know how it has helped you how it has been a blessing to you so we are going on with the first prophetic code for today now like i say these codes are number one for practice and number two to help you navigate in your prophetic journey now the first code is the code of touch now if you pay attention to certain prophets wherever you find yourself and i'm talking about genuine prophets you'd realize that sometimes while they are ministering to people working among the congregation they use this code of touch which means that you see them touch the people either on their shoulder or their hand or wherever the reason is because science has proved that the hand is one of the organs which is able to transfer information to the brain now every prophetic person knows that anytime you touch someone you are able to receive prophetic information from the people whether they like it or not now i've seen people who are not necessarily prophets who do all manner of spiritual things use the same prophetic code they would touch the person and with that they can get information from the person whether the person likes it or not that is why i always say that or i always advise my sons and daughters in the ministry that be careful who asks you to open your hands for a reading or whatever who touches you or who lays hands on you now the moment the person is able to establish that contact you'll be able to receive information from the person whether they like it or not you break that barrier or that restriction so if you pay attention to certain prophets while they are ministering though they can ask a question like can i talk to you and before that during that or after that you see that they either touch the person's shoulder if you have not been trained in the prophetic you will not know that this is what they are doing but it is a code in the prophetic whatever you touch someone you you see you get access to prophetic information about the people sometimes it will work sometimes it will not work but it is a code that you would have to learn how to use and at the right time if god doesn't want you to get information you will not get the information but it is a code that if you can use you would realize that you begin to receive so many things about the person it is similar to the code of questions and if you've watched the part one where i teach about the code of questions for instance you ask someone a question can i talk to you can i pray for you what is happening in the family you know there are certain prophetic questions that when you ask and the people respond to you get enough information about that thing it's the same thing with the touch when you touch someone on their shoulder how are you doing then you see the prophet maybe touch them on their shoulder or wherever you would realize that the prophet is getting information for them because spiritually if there is any barrier he has been able to break that barrier and get access to the people that's the first quote now you would see that 
this code is not only a prophetic code but it's a supernatural code the woman with the issue of blood when she wanted a healing she said to herself that if only i can touch the hem of his garment i'll be made what whole so it is a supernatural code like i'm teaching you already and if you're a prophetic person and jesus is our prophet if you can touch someone who is a prophetic person a servant of god you can receive healings, breakthroughs, supernatural manifestations, encounters, just by touching. Now, in the book of Mark, you would realize that Jesus calls or gathers a multitude and then he heals them. Now, the writer says that as many as touched him were made whole. Which means that there is a supernatural code of touch. Anytime Jesus is healing someone, whether with blindness or leprosy, he could easily just speak the word and then they'll be made whole or they'll be healed. But sometimes you go to the point where you have to touch them where the issue is. So the code of touch is a powerful prophetic code. And if you are watching me here, you must be led by the spirit to do that and you must have the understanding that there are certain times that you will do it and you might not necessarily receive anything it's like all the codes for instance the code of questions sometimes you ask questions and you don't necessarily receive anything but per the codes that we have a combination of the codes would always guarantee you to receive something supernaturally something prophetically the code of touch so like i said sometimes if you are not trained in these things you see some of the prophets do these things and you 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 might not know but if after today after teaching you these things if you pay attention you see that some prophets do that a lot is that okay remember that every information that is released in the realm of the spirit must be granted access by god himself and so you cannot live any wayward life live in sin and then just believe that you use the prophetic codes and still receive information sometimes you receive because the gift and the callings of god is without repentance i hope that you understand this but god is the one who grants access to receive information the holy spirit is responsible for this now we want to go to the second prophetic code that is what we refer to as the code of Shiloh or the code of rest because Shiloh means rest. First Samuel chapter 3 verses 21, the Bible says that, And the Lord continued to appear in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed to himself in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Now, if you have followed, you would know that we have done what we refer to as hermeneutics, studying the Bible. And if you have not watched that video, you are not part, you have to go and watch it. Hermeneutics, the art of interpretation, and then homiletics, the art of preaching. So, the word Shiloh represents rest. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 21, you have to pay attention to this. And the Lord continued to appear in Shiloh. The Lord continued to appear in the place of rest. Now, I say this all the time that God is only present, but he doesn't manifest his presence everywhere and at every time. There are certain specific times that God manifests himself. And that will lead us to the next prophetic code after the code of Shiloh, the code of rest. So, the word Shiloh is the, is, is the word for rest. And so, God appears in the place of rest now sometimes you don't receive prophetic images because there is too much noise in your spirit and i've explained this before and sometimes you don't receive prophetic words or you don't receive prophetic information because there's too much going on in that prophetic person's mind or life he he's not at a place of rest he's he's you know 
bothered with so many things that he does not have the rest he needs to be able to hear from God. Mind you, the prophets have made us understand that there was earthquake, there was all manner of noise, winds, but the voice of God was not in it. That the voice of God came in stillness and calmness. Which means that when God wants to speak to you, sometimes he needs that rest, that peace of mind, that calmness. So, a lot of prophets struggle with this and they are not able to hear God because they are, they are troubled with so many things. That's why sometimes you see prophets have a lot of people around them to prevent them from you know, having issues where there are so many people who are doing things or issues that can grieve their spirit and make them troubled. Now, in the prophetic, whenever you are too troubled until you have trained yourself where there can be a lot of noise, chaos, trouble, and you can still hear from God. In the early stages, when there's too much noise, you cannot hear from God because He speaks with a still, small voice. You cannot hear from God. So you need that peace of mind, that rest, that calmness. And God is saying that he appeared in Shiloh, which is a place of rest. For the Lord, I'm continuing to read it, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of God. So God reveals himself in Shiloh by the word of God, which means that in Shiloh, God speaks his word and God reveals himself. So this code works with hearing and seeing. When you are in the place of rest, you are meditation, you know, you are meditating and I've, and I you are place of meditation. I've told you that if you are meditating, you need calmness, peace. If not, you will struggle. So we are learning from someone which is one of the most accurate prophets for the Bible says that none of his words fell to the ground. And so there are a lot of things that we must learn from someone. Okay. And the Bible is telling us, and the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. Which means that there is a place of mind that you must get to. So, the code of Shiloh is also a code of mental rest. Okay. Not just that you are a place where there is calmness or something, but you yourself, as a prophetic person, there is rest, there is peace of mind. So, I advise young prophets that whenever you are troubled with so many issues, be careful how you enter into the prophetic. Just, just avoid it because there will be too many voices speaking to you at that time. The voice of the devil, the voice of the flesh, and the voice of God that you are likely to make a mistake. And so many prophets have made this mistake. So the code of Shiloh is the code of rest. And I'm telling you that it is a mental state not just your physical state because i've taught you how to create a prophetic atmosphere but in the code of shiloh it is a mental state where you must be in a place of rest i hope what i'm teaching it is going far now some people who don't get this because maybe you have not yet been called into the prophetic but i pray for you may you be called into the prophetic every child of god must be prophetic and as you are listening to me i pray for you May your prophetic senses be activated in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare in your place of rest, may God reveal himself to you as he revealed himself to Samuel by the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So the code of Shiloh hinges on your spiritual state. Spiritual state. That is why you have to train yourself in meditation. The teaching I did on meditation, you have to go back and then train yourself on meditation. You know, teach yourself to meditate. Now, in meditation, you have to get to a place where even 
where there is noise, you can still meditate effectively. Because as a prophet, you not always have the atmosphere to be conducive. You go to places where you would see that things are not organized. Things are not in place. There's a lot of noise. But you would need to have trained yourself so much that no matter the circumstance, you can still hear from God. Is that okay? So, the code of Shiloh or the code of rest hinges on your spiritual state. Build yourself up. Build your spiritual man up. Be a person of prayer. Be a person of the word. So, rest is a place or is a state of spirituality where there is peace or where you are full or there is an absolute reliance on God. It's a state of peace or an absolute reliance on the counsel or the wisdom of God. So in this place of rest also, and I want to believe that you are following, this place of rest also, it is a total dependence on God that as you are in this place of rest, peace, this place of Shiloh, you are dependent on God to give you that information, to reveal himself to you. If God has not revealed himself to you, nobody can. So in this place, we are trusting that in this place of rest, you are depending on God to reveal himself to you, to give you his word. Is that okay? Now that is the second code. We want to move to the third code. If per adventure you have a question, you know, you can just ask in the comment section and then I will respond to the questions. Is that okay? And the next code is the code of positioning. Now, I want you to understand that this shouldn't be a religious practice. The code of positioning shouldn't be a religious practice. Now, like I've said already, God is omnipresent, but he doesn't manifest his presence, his glory everywhere. So, for instance, you would see that maybe when you come to church and then they are leading worship or praise or prayer, you can fall under the power have an encounter with the presence of god when you are in church and then things are happening but when you are at your workplace you can still worship and not necessarily fall under the power because the next code i'm going to talk to you about like i said is the code of positioning as a prophet you must know where to position yourself to hear god God is everywhere. But as a prophet, you see, that's why the prophets like going to a hill or a mountain or a secluded place so that they can hear God. And for some of you, where you hear God the most will be at church. Some of you, maybe you have a prayer closet in your house. Some of you, it is your bedroom. I'm talking about positioning what you would realize is that the first code was a code of a mental state this code is more of a physical state there are certain people once they sit on their prophetic chair or they sit where they normally sit all of a sudden they'll start hearing things some people once they stand behind the pulpit they start seeing things hearing all manner of things and you must know yourself this is the code of positioning now Genesis chapter 28 verses 10 to 16. A very classical example. You would see that Jacob does not hear or see any vision at all until he gets to this place that the Bible refers to as a holy place. And all of a sudden he starts seeing visions. And he says one thing that I did not know that God is in this place. Even though he was sleeping on a rock, using the rock as a pillow, the stone as a pillow, as difficult as it was or as uncomfortable as it was he was still able to see visions because of the place he was 
The Bible refers to that place as a holy place, Bethel. Now, listen. Like I've said already, don't make this a religious thing, but a spiritual thing. That you know that, and, and for instance, some of you, it is whenever you get into contact with your spiritual father, spiritual mentor, the moment you are talking to him, that is your place. Like once you are there, the moment you are listening to him, you receive more things, you hear more things. The visions become more rampant. The revelations become more rampant. The prophetic images, prophetic impressions become more rampant. And you must be prophetic and sensitive enough to know that that is your place. The code of positioning. And some can start training or start submitting to a prophetic person and then after some time they leave for whatever reason they leave then when they leave all of a sudden they feel like the connection is no more there and they have to come back it is the code of positioning and as a prophet you must know where you must be positioned to hear God more. It's not as if you will not hear God at other places you hear, but there are certain places that you know that when I get to this place, you know that you hear God more. Like, I, I teach this. This is one of the things that I wanted to put in my first book, Why Dream. But the Lord restricted the information I put there because there are certain places spiritually there is a water body there. Physically, there might not be anything there. But spiritually, there might be a water body there. Now, prophetically speaking, I've seen that a lot of times when you get to that place as a prophet, you receive more. Sometimes it can be a fountain. Sometimes, and those of you who see these kind of things, sometimes it may be a fountain. Sometimes it may be just some kind of like a river. Sometimes just maybe like a pond. Like you get there spiritually, your eyes are open and you see that no, there's a water body here. One of the ways you know these things is that when you get there, that place, once you get there, you feel a little cold. And this is not for everybody. That's why the, the Holy Spirit had to, you know, restrict some of the information I put in my first book, Why Dream. If you've not gotten it, you can get that book. It will be in the you know, description. You can get that book and read it. And then my second book, which is premiering very soon. There are certain places. Now, not only that, let me, let me, let me, because it's a prophetic class, let me, let me take you into. There are certain places that when you get there, there is an angel standing there. And a lot of times, if you have watched my video on angels, I teach that there are two places where there are a lot of angelic activities. The hospital and then the cemetery. I, I cannot go into that detail, but you know. If, if you watch the, my teaching on angels, you, you get that understanding. One of the places where there are a lot of angelic activities or there is an angel always standing there. And the first time I saw this was in a different country, not where I am now. A very tall angel standing on a church building. Because, like I've said, spiritually, the way like we see trees, forests, water bodies planted physically is the same thing in the realm of the spirit. And I've told that for instance, when you get to a water body, so sometimes you are going to a place and all of a sudden you are feeling cold. It is a sign that spiritually there's a water body there. And a lot of times, that is why you see, when you are planting a church, where you plant the church is important. And the direction of the church is also important. These things are sometimes things that is difficult to share because not everybody might understand these things, but I hope that you are understanding. So, for instance, churches that are called of God are of God. A lot of times there's an angel on that church. Have you read in the Bible says that to the angel of the church? I know that that scripture is talking about the physical angel in the church, but spiritually also there's an angel there. And the first time I saw it, I was amazed. So you can see a church. That's why even if you don't belong to a church, you don't believe in, in the church, you know, just if, if you're not sure about it, you think that it's better not to speak against it. Especially sometimes the Orthodox churches, the price they have paid and the things that they have done. 
so spiritually there's still places that there's a fountain there and I pray for you that may, may you be open to these things may you have encounters with these things that there are certain places that's the code of positioning now sometimes when you are even prophesying to someone or you're in a church giving a prophetic word there are certain times that for instance when you are facing a particular angle you receive more information for some people they believe that when they face the east and i'm telling you this these are information that prophets share and i'm sharing them with you there, there are some people that they believe that when they are facing the east in their church they receive more and these are major prophets who who tell me who tell me this who discuss these things like we talk about these things and it's that's what all this i'm teaching it shouldn't be a religious thing it should be from a place of revelation and insight that there are certain places once you are facing like some of the prophets when they are facing the east they receive more maybe for you there could be a place where maybe when you are facing the altar or you are facing maybe where the worship is coming from where the choristers are singing from when you are facing them the the you know the energy from that place can heighten your sensitivity to receive more it is the code of positioning the code of positioning and and i want to believe that you know you are you are steady do you realize that jesus himself sometimes he will go to a particular place a mountain sometimes the bible says that a solitary place to pray because the code of shiloh and then the code of positioning work hand in hand so there are people who take for granted that oh i can pray in my house i can worship in my house no as true as that is it is also not accurate because there are certain places physically speaking that when you are there you hear more you see more i sense in my spirit someone here you you want to do something that you have never done before like it's as if you are watching this and the impartation that you have received and then the enlightenment you have received from not only these videos other videos that you have watched already but i'm sensing now that you want to do something you have never done before and i've taught you this as a code and i'll come to this code i've taught you this as a code that you can learn so many things but sometimes the only thing that will trigger the prophetic in you is when you do something as you are led by the spirit you offer something Give something you see you do something you have never done before and i want to challenge you some of you that's how you would you would unlock a prophetic level in you that you have never seen before and as i was teaching on this thing i sensed it that you are here you want to so the number will be placed on the screen or in the comment section send send me a message you you sense that you want to do something you have never done before let me give you the last scripture on this code and then we move on so that the video is not too long. Numbers chapter 23 verses 3 to 4. Then Balaam said to Balak, stand beside your burnt offering. I hope that you are following. And I will go, perhaps the Lord will come to meet me and whatever he shows me i will tell you so he went to a desolate hill now god met balaam he went where to a desolate hill. this is a prophet this is what a prophet so Listen, we must learn this thing. The Bible says that we should, we should seek after the ancient parts. Now, these things, we, we refer to them and, and, you know, go back to them to help us know the ways of the prophets. 
so that you are not limited in your prophetic journey, your prophetic life. So this prophecy that I want to hear God. I want God to reveal himself to me. I want to hear deep things. And this is the same thing as the, you know, there's what we call prophetic inquiry. And sometimes you have an issue, you go to a prophet and then he has to inquire about the issue. Pray. Ask God. Look into the issue. What is happening? What is not going to happen? Like one of my spiritual daughters who is writing an exam, she wants to know whether she's going to pass the exam. So she calls and she asks me. So as a prophet, you must start now doing inquiry. So I said, if you have not watched the prophetic code number one and number two, you might struggle here. So as a prophet, you now have to do inquiries. Check in the realm of the spirit. Look into the future. What is happening? And I've talked about the code of traveling, going into the future, going into the past. Look, has the person passed? This is not necessarily to change what is happening. No, this is just to see what is happening in the future. So this guy as a prophet said that I'm going to a desolate place to, to meet God. And he's sure, he knows that when I go to this place, I'll hear God. I'll meet God and I'll see whatever thing I have to see. So you are checking as a prophet. You are looking into the realm. You are, you are seeing. Especially if you are a seer, this will be very good for you. and to be easier for you if you are a seer. So you check and you check and then you, you see what is happening. What is God saying? What are you seeing in the future? And I, so I do this and then I call and I tell her that this is your request concerning the exams. You are not going to fail. You will pass. And this person, and for a lot of people, they can be worried because as a prophet, sometimes you can sit and tell people and then some way, somehow, they are still struggling in their faith. But that is fine. That is normal with a, the with a prophetic. Not everybody has that faith enough. So I tell her that this exams, you are not going to fail you are going to pass and this is a testimony i am receiving as i'm recording this video now okay so you look and then you check and i tell you that you are not going to fail you are going to pass and so today she sends a message and says that the results are in and she has passed okay so there's a place where the prophet must be able to say, I'm going to this place and inquire of the Lord and see and check, see what is happening in the future. Is this person going to pass? Is not going to pass? All these things must be done from a standpoint of spiritual understanding, insight, prophetic wisdom, not religiously. Okay, so, and you see into the future, you tell the person, and as a prophet, once you see, be confident about what you have seen. Okay. School of ministry, be confident about what you see in the prophetic. If not, you would be thrown left and right. Be confident. So this person has passed the exams and she's surprised. And I told her that, I told you this, and this is about weeks ago. Okay. So as a prophet, the code of positioning is something that you must not take for granted. Now, the next code or the last but one code is the code of emotions. Now, this is where the emotions of people are mirrored to the prophet and prophetic images, messages are decoded as a result. I hope you understand. The code of emotions. So you can be in a meeting place. You are going to preach. You are going to minister. Whatever. All of a sudden, you start feeling sick. You start feeling stomach pains. Start feeling maybe sometimes even depressed. Sometimes anxiety. Sometimes fear. Afraid sometimes excitement all these things are emotions that the lord or the holy spirit is mirroring onto you as a prophet and 
the, that is the, the, the challenge is that where you have to differentiate whether it is you yourself or it is God speaking to you. If you're a prophetic person, I can assure you and I can guarantee you that about 90% it is God speaking to you about something. There is someone there that God is talking to you about. About 90 to 95%. If you're a prophetic person, especially I've told you that there are three kinds of prophets, the auditory, the visual, and the sensory. Especially if you're a sensory prophet, you have this a lot. And the sensory prophets, like I've told you before, that they struggle a lot with emotional issues, problems in their life, and sicknesses, because their emotions are being messed up by the devil because that is how they will hear God. So if the devil can mess it up so that they don't know whether it is God speaking to them or it is they themselves having this depression, anxiety or, or stuff like this, it is because the devil is trying to muddy the water so that they don't know their prophetic nature and they are confused about it. But the code of emotions is a powerful code. Sometimes you can get to church, all of a sudden you are having headaches, all of a sudden you are feeling afraid it is not because of something you are going through necessarily it is because of something someone is going through that the lord is trying to speak to you about you must understand as you are going there you are a prophet or you are a prophetic person and sometimes you need a code of emotions to understand what god is saying john chapter 13 verse 21 the bible says that very truly i tell you one of you is going to betray me now in this scripture if you pay attention you would realize that before that jesus went through an emotional roller coaster day before he gave this prophetic word he became sad and through that emotion he releases this prophetic word so this code is a powerful code so these emotions that you would feel as a prophetic person you must understand that these emotions will be triggered by random thoughts pain sensations etc in your even in your physical in your physical body these emotions will be triggered by random thoughts pain emotions ideas these emotions can be triggered by it but if you're a prophetic person you have to know that this is god speaking to you i don't know if you are getting it because so many times sometimes you know you are you're in a you're in a meeting and then all, as you are preaching or you are worshiping or as you get there all of a sudden you are feeling so happy about something or you sense like good news like this, this excitement all of a sudden your eye falls on someone highlights someone it's it's likely that 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 prophetic impression is with with respect to that person you are you are looking at and i hope you are getting it are getting it say i get it i get it the next code and the final code is the code of giving second Kings chapter 4 verses 8 to 7 this is an issue of the shunammite woman the shunammite woman gives something the only thing in fact everything she had everything that's why you see i was teaching you about the you know giving that's how, how you see she gives everything and immediately the the prophetic nature in the prophet is stirred up and begins to speak you have a child she had to give everything and that's why those of you that will be led to do these kind of things you must obey it now this is not only for you to receive but also as a prophetic person it's also for you to tap into a prophetic realm she gives she she gives and i've seen people give things it's a prophetic code houses cars 
all manner of things money all, all kinds of things to activate the prophetic so Jesus says something that he that gives to a prophet in the name of a prophet receives the prophet's reward so when you give to the prophet you receive the prophet's reward and it could be anything you could be trusting God for a miracle, a breakthrough, a prophetic impartation, and you could receive it just by giving. So, and as a prophet, you must be able to teach your followers these things. You must be able to teach your people these things. That that is how you know you tap into the prophetic. Apart from honor, the next thing is giving. So, you must teach people these things. Those of you, especially if you're in the prophetic ministry, and this ministry has, you know bless you these teachings has been a blessing to you you must be intelligent enough to know that you must do something you must release or give something to this ministry you must be it's a prophetic code Acts chapter 10 verse 31 and then we'll round up I, I, I there are so many codes I wish we can continue but I don't want to make this video too long Acts chapter 10 verse 31. This is about Cornelius. When the angel is sent to him, he said that your prayers, your arms, your giving is responsible for this thing you are encountering now. So giving is not only a prophetic code, but it's also a supernatural code. So, these are codes. I think I've given you about five codes today. Five codes today. If you're a seer, I've taught you these things already. If you're a seer, as you are training yourself, sometimes just learn, practice closing your eyes. Pray. Close your eyes. And then look at what you can see spiritually. That's why those of you who are watching this for the first time, you have to go to some of the other prophetic teachings. It will help you. Is that okay? Now, I want to remind you of two things. I'm releasing a new book, which is Dunamis. It is talking about power. Spiritual power. Intellectual power. All kinds of power. And I want to encourage you to get to the site which will be in the description and then purchase the book you can buy it for a friend you can buy it for other people purchase it consume it to be a blessing to you now on the 8th of august we are having a prophetic impartation service and this will be the close of our school of ministry for this season so on the 8th we'll be doing that if you're in the school of ministry you want to join the school of ministry set your alarms mark your calendars on the 8th of august the flyer will be posted and then you can know when we will have it get a bottle of anointing oil get a mantle anything you want anything you want to use as i'm going to pray over those things but especially an anointing oil i want you to anoint yourselves is that okay anoint yourselves and we are trusting that the hand of the lord will be upon you an anointing will be upon you that the prophetic channels in you will be opened up amen i want to pray for everyone that is watching here now and I decree and I declare may the prophetic fall upon you now in the name of Jesus. May your eyes open now in the name of Jesus. Ears open now. Your prophetic sensitivity is sharpened, sharpened, sharpened. I pray for each and everyone listening as my sound, as my voice enters their ears, enters their spirit, enters their heart. 
may the prophetic also enter them in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare by the fire of Jehovah let their sensitivity their prophetic sensitivity prophetic channels be stirred up in the name of Jesus sharpen in the name of Jesus I pray for you may your prophetic be stirred up in the name of Jesus I pray a prophetic impartation now may may the prophetic descend upon you now may the angels of the prophetic begin to touch your spirit man in the name of Jesus I pray may you begin to receive prophetic images now in the name of Jesus may the prophetic anointing fall upon you wherever you are listening from as you place your hand upon your head I pray now in the name of Jesus may the prophetic fall upon you now in the name of Jesus may the prophetic grace fall upon you now in the name of Jesus may the prophetic anointing fall upon you now in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare may the prophetic fall upon you now in the name of Jesus fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire in the name of Jesus now receive the prophetic now receive the prophetic in the name of Jesus begin to see begin to hear begin to sense begin to smell begin to taste in the mighty name of Jesus we decree and we declare it done in Jesus name amen if you want to join our school of ministry the prophetic school of ministry send us a message the number will be either in the description or on the screen or at the end of it and then you can reach to us and then you join god bless you practice the codes if you have questions ask in the comment section i'll try and respond is that okay practice practice Hebrew says that we, we become perfect or we mature by the exercising of our gifts. Hebrews 5. So practice, practice and practice until you become perfect. God bless you. See you soon. Bye bye. So we hope that you've been blessed by this. And this is a wonderful opportunity to give your life to Christ if you haven't done so. And so if you want to give your life to Christ, send us a message via the number on WhatsApp. Or send us a message on Facebook at Pastor Selim. If you want and are in need of prayers and counseling, it is on the same platforms. Let us know and we'll be there to pray for you. God bless you and see you next time.